Yesterday, it went up to that line too and then pulled back. So today it's doing it again. We have to see. It's a risk on day in the stock market. So that's good. That means maybe it. Hello, everyone. Gareth Soloway joins us again with his analysis of the macro data, various assets, stocks, Bitcoin, altcoins, and discusses the key price levels to look for in the coming days. Subscribe now, hit that bell icon, and embark on an enriching journey toward financial success. Let's unlock the potential of these markets together and pave the way for a brighter financial future. Welcome aboard. Bitcoin rebounded 2% on April 4 as a broad risk asset rally followed encouraging signals from the United States Federal Reserve. Bitcoin joined U.S. stocks indices in heading higher on the day, while gold cooled after setting new all-time highs above $2,300. The day prior, Fed Chair Jerome Powell delivered a dovish tone on economic policy, suggesting that interest rate cuts, a key boon for risk assets, would come before the end of 2024. Let's start with the U.S. dollar here, guys. So remember, the U.S. dollar had this big wedge pattern. It kept on bouncing in and out of the wedge pattern. I'm going to zoom out right now. And what we could see is if we really go out, I mean, look at this incredible wedge pattern. So you have, again, the highs over here. Then it broke out. And look, the retrace to the scene of the crime. See that? Broke out, retraced, and then went on its merry way. That's super normal for a chart to do. It's essentially like, think about it the first time you leave your parents' house, right? You kind of go out on your own, but then inevitably you're like, oh, I miss home. You come back. Well, maybe not everyone misses home, but ultimately you come back for Thanksgiving. You come back for the holidays. You come back home before you go out on your merry way, right? So that's what charts do. They tend to break out, which is why I don't buy usually extended breakouts. Instead, I wait patiently to see if price comes back to that level. Now, sometimes it doesn't, and I miss a trade. But you know what? There's always another trade out there. There's trades every single day. So I don't really worry anymore if I'm missing a trade. There's always another one around the corner. Now, as we went up, we kind of put in this major pivot high. We can see again how it hit here and here, here, and then look at what happened right here. We started to break out. Now, I'm going to zoom in so we can really delve into what's going on here. Now, as we zoom in, we can see the dollar again broke above. It pushed up and it confirmed, right? So it confirmed, there's no doubt about it. It absolutely confirmed. The confirmation candle was right here. Then you got a secondary push, but look, one, two, three bars, and where is it going? Right to the scene of the crime. And this is, again, when you look at charts and you find good trend lines, you guys are gonna be marveling at how many times you get breakouts. Now the retail crowd usually is buying you know, the breakout. What I've learned to do is I say, you know what? I don't really feel comfortable. The dollar's gone from down here, basically straight up. I don't want to pay up like that. Like when I go and buy a new pair of jeans at the at the mall, I don't say to myself, wow, look, they just jacked up those prices of those jeans by 50%. Now I really want to buy a pair of jeans. I say, you know what? I'll wait till next week or the week after when they're on sale, when price comes back down and that's when I'll buy. It's for some weird reason, investors get this FOMO, and this is something that I went through when I was a new trader as well. Trust me, I've been through everything that you guys go through, every single thing, made every mistake a million times. But one thing eventually I learned is that in general, you wanna treat it the same as you're going to the store. You wanna look for sales, not be paying when, when everyone else is scrambling for it. That's not when you wanna pay triple the price for something like a stock or commodity, or in this case, the dollar. Now, what I will be watching for here is, does the dollar stay here and bounce? That's what it should do, but it doesn't mean it has to. Remember, once you confirm a breakout, probabilities are now that there's a 75% chance that it will continue up after the retrace. So it's retraced, so there's 75% chance it bounces there's still a 25% chance that it doesn't. Remember, there's no such thing as 100% in trading or investing, there just isn't. So you have to be aware that if it closes below here, what does it have to do? To fail this, it has to confirm back below. Once it confirms, the upside probabilities of 75% now flip reverse 
to now 75% to the downside. That's really important to understand. It's all about probabilities. The more you think in terms of probabilities, the more you become aware of scenarios that can flip those and the more careful you'll be on exiting trades that maybe aren't going in the right way. Okay, let's go to the S&P 500. Again, S&P 500, we talked about confirmation. I did a redraw of a trend line just to show this because I think this is even, even more powerful how this is now below now, again, coming down here. The S&P futures are up a little bit on the day, so we are looking at a positive day. But again, at this point, really, unless we come back up in here and we confirm back up in this range, this market is basically what I would consider a ticking time bomb. Now, ticking time bomb, I don't want you to think like, oh my goodness, it's gonna like crash, right? Crashes we've talked about, those don't happen at highs. Or I shouldn't say they don't happen at highs, but it's, it's, it's like 1% of the time. You know, remember how markets work. Because markets are psychologically driven by humans, right? In general, this price action has conditioned all of us to buy the dip. So what happens is when you're putting in tops, you're going up, you're going up, you're going up, and then you, you, know, you have a little pullback and then buy the dippers come in and then you have another little pullback and you make a lower low, right? Low, lower, low, lower, a high, lower, high. You go back up and then here you come down again, lower. And that's the way markets put in tops. They kind of slowly roll over and then like a snowball down a mountain, they start to increase, right? So then you start more and more, less and less by the dippers, right? So people start to be like, wait a minute, I bought the last two dips and I'm down on my positions. This isn't working anymore. So the next dip, they're like, no, I'm not going in that direction. And so you start to get the bigger drops until the end is where you have the major fall. That's when no one's buying the dip, they're all too scared to buy the dip, and you ultimately bottom out. Once you get people that are too scared to buy the dip and you get that big flush, guess what? Is that the time to buy the dip? Yeah, usually it is. Not always, but usually it is. When everyone's panicking, when no one's gutsy enough to step up, that's when you buy the dip. Just a quick little interim story. One of the first places I bought was on the beach um, here in Florida. It was a beachfront condo, and literally it was in 2012, and the real estate market in, in the U.S., especially in Florida, was horrendous. The building was fully done, and there was literally no one living in the building. There were 21 units on the beach in the building. And I went in there, and I, I said, wow, you know, they're like, oh, yeah, we just want to get someone in here because once someone takes the plunge and buys in this building, like, we think that everyone else will buy in the building. It's just no one wants to be the first one in an empty building. Like, you know, everyone's too scared. Well, you know me. I'm, like, in that mode of saying, well, what the heck, man? That's, that's like a dead-on signal that I should be buying. And so not only did I get a crazy deal, so it was the model unit, right? They, they, had, they had this, like, and by the way, back then I was single and, you know, I was just, you know, living the dream. And, and it basically it was the model unit. The furniture was done, the, the interior decorate. And I literally said to them, I'll give you like, I think I paid 100 under, under what they were asking. And, and I said, in addition, I want everything in this unit. And again, I'm a single guy. I'm not a, a, you know, a good interior decorator. And they said, sure, take it. And, and again, it, my point is, is that when everyone else is panicking, that's the best time to get opportunities. Now, obviously, you have to do your research, but common sense. It's a matter of what's emotional versus what's common sense. Common sense was, was the world ending? No. Was real estate eventually going to come back? Yes. Am I going to get an incredible deal on a beachfront condo? Yes. So ultimately, I said, you know what, thinking logically and not being fearful about, oh, I'm the only person in the building. By the way, it was actually kind of cool to be the only person in the building, but that was the time to buy. And those are the types of ways you have to think. It changes everything about your investing strategy. Okay, this chart I'm watching, Apple. Apple, again, hammering on a head and shoulders neckline. And again, I do still think that this breaks down. It still may get a little bounce, but eventually I think this is going here. And eventually, if the markets actually see a bigger correction of 10%, I actually think we go down to that 135 level. We talked about that chart before. Looking at Tesla real quick here, guys. Looking at this here, we see this longer term trend line. I still think this is where it's headed. Tesla, again, um, a lot of people are now, I'm hearing price targets of like some, some bear was saying, oh, it, it might, it's only worth $14 a share. Who knows? Frankly, I couldn't care less. All I know is that sentiment causes more selling, which then I am like, oh yeah, this is great, right? Because if the selling gets overdone, then there's an opportunity on the swing trade, right? Like this is the other thing to remember, guys, and then we'll get into some crypto charts, we'll spin the wheel, but you, you have to be able to separate yourself out from what you're hearing. 
and you have to think almost in a contrarian way. What you'll notice is if I put up a post, and by the way, this happened with MicroStrategies, right? So I put up a post about MicroStrategies being overvalued, how based on the market cap of MicroStrategies, it was really like investors were paying 140000 for the Bitcoin that they hold. All right. So to me, it's like, well, why would you buy MicroStrategy? If you're buying MicroStrategies because of the Bitcoin, why wouldn't you just buy Bitcoin and get it for half the price? And anyways, my logic was that. And people were just like, oh, you're such an idiot, you know, da, 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 da. And I saw that. I'm like, oh, yeah, baby. Now I'm right. And then literally days later, it dropped like 100, 200 bucks. But, but the point is you look for these little sentiment inverse indicators. They can be very, very powerful. And this, and by the way, in, in today's world where you're seeing stuff on social media and everywhere else, thinking independently is so important. And I'm sure many of you guys agree with that. All right, looking at Bitcoin, what do we have, right? So Bitcoin stayed below that key trend line. Now it is pushing back up. Ask yourself this, did Bitcoin confirm below the white trend line? Yay or nay? The answer is no, it didn't. So it, it again, what we say yesterday, probabilities were about 50-50, right? Of whether it was going to go down or up. Right now, it's trying to fight its way back up. It's early in the day. If you look at yesterday, and I zoom in on this, what happened yesterday, right? Yesterday, it went up to that line too and then pulled back. So today, it's doing it again. We have to see. It's a risk on day in the stock market, so that's good. That means maybe it can get that risk on push. But ultimately, if you're a bull, you need to see this thing close above that trend line. If it closes below, it hasn't confirmed yet, so the bears don't take over fully. But remember, the more it consolidates below, what type of pattern could it be making, right? Bear flag. So again, you know, down sideways, right? So again, bulls need to get this back above soon. Otherwise, the bears are going to get more confident. More confident bears means more scared bulls, and ultimately it could drop down. If they can get it back above here, well, guess what? Now you can actually go test what we would call the scene of the crime of the bull flag bottom, right? Remember this bull flag over here? Oh, let me just draw that in. Right here and right here, which failed. So that would be now resistance. So if you get a move up, that's going to be your next resistance level on Bitcoin. Okay, next up, let's go to the Ethereum chart. Ethereum never broke its trend line. So that's a small positive. It's still getting a bounce just the same. Look at this cool trend line, though. Again, going all the way over here. Look at all these pivot points right through here, there, and where did we stop? Right there. So Again, it's holding support. The bulls right now are still technically in charge of the chart. Breaks down and confirms the bears take over control, right? So again, basically that's what markets are. It's you have a million people that are bulls and a million people that are bears. When there's more bears, like a million and a half bears, then control goes to the downside. When there's a million and a half versus a million bulls, right? I mean, if the bulls have the million and a half, then it's moving to the upside. And that's really all it is. It's sentiment. It's psychological. The markets are basically like, like if I had to train, like some, let's say someone comes to me and says, hey, I, wanna, I want you to train me as a pro trader. The ideal profession, I know you'd think like, oh, well, maybe they should have worked at you know Schwab or Goldman Sachs. No, 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 no. Preconceived BS from Wall Street. I don't like that. That's not a good trader. I want a psychology professor. I want a, someone, a psychologist. I want someone who knows the human condition. That's the best traders in the world. You want to get better at trading? Start learning about what goes on in here. That is the most important thing. Okay, next up, let's take a look here at Cardano real quick. Cardano, look at this beautiful parallel. It is holding the lower range. We can see all these levels here, all these high pivots right here, and look at what we just hit. So Cardano is actually bouncing off support. In terms of resistance, there's a level right up here, and again, it's right at that midpoint. That would be your high-end target price in the near term, right back to 70 cents. If it can't get there, and let's say it consolidates in a bear flag, right, bear flag, then you got to be careful. Same thing. Watch for confirmation to the downside. All right, next up, gold, guys. Gold again here. Uh, if we go to the daily chart, you can see if I zoom in on the daily chart, just a tiny little pullback. Look at where my trend line is. It's so close for where I wanted to short gold. Again, I miss plenty of trades. Every single day I miss trades. Not the end of the world. There's always another one. I just need to catch a couple of them to make good money. But again, that would be your, at least for me, that's my target. If we get to, let's say, 2320 or 2330, maybe on the jobs report tomorrow, maybe it'll pop on that. We'll have to see what the US dollar does. Thank you for watching the interview highlights of Gareth Soloway. If you enjoy this highlight video, please kindly subscribe and help share this video for us to share more of this valuable content. Thank you.